Did you experience judgment? Because I feel like the word witchcraft. Yes. Oh, so comes much. with so, so much taboo. <laughs> we know we're looking at like between three and nine million women burned and <laughs> killed in our history not that long ago not in the grand scale ago. of things because they had a relationship with nature. I slowly started saying, I like crystals. And oh my gosh, have you ever looked into astrology? It's so interesting. <laughs> When deep down I'm like obsessed, you know, <laughs> witchcraft. <laughs> I want other people to have this amazing truth as well. It's beautiful. Welcome to the Deja Vu podcast, where we believe that living a life of magic can be the default. Join us each week as we playfully and authentically dive into the mysteries of life and explore what it truly means to be human. From spirituality, wellness, and all things taboo, we don't hold anything back. So without further ado, let's let the magic unfold. Hello, beautiful humans, and welcome back to another episode of the Deja Blue podcast. We are officially rocking our very first guest in the new set, in the new house, in the new studio, in the garage. We've got the, a full house. We've got a whole stream of individuals that are sitting here because today's guest is the kind of person that brings in a crowd. We're excited. We're stoked. We've all been fangirling behind the scenes. Yes, that's right. Every single person in this room has been like going through the gram and listening to your bars. And I've been like, damn, this girl is a queen, like full on. And there is something that is so liberating for all of us to be able to receive the gift of another woman that's given her the permission, given herself the permission slip to be the entirety of who she is unapologetically while simultaneously continuing to be the student of life. And that sweet combination that you have tapped into is rippling inspiration in directions that you have no idea about, but it is changing the world. Um, and so it is like my greatest honor and my my highest excitement and my such a joy to have you on the podcast. Today we have to the Deja Blue podcast in the golden hands, we have Queen Herbie in the house. <laughs> yeah. Cheering for myself. <laughs> the my babes, my goddesses, thank you for having me. This is such a, I just stumbled across your brilliance on Gaia. I would like subscribe to Gaia and I just randomly watched an episode and the only one I watched was with you. I don't know what it was, like something in your eyes where I was like, oh, need to know this person and then heard your story and I was like, let me go to Instagram and find Miss Blue. You found me. And it said, follow back. And I was like, this is not a coincidence. <clears throat> so here we are. So there's your part of the story and then there's my part of the story, which was, I can't remember who exactly it was. I think it might've been Mia Magic. And she was like, oh my God, you have to follow this queen on Instagram. And I was like, where is she? She showed me. And we went through like, I don't know, three. And I was sold. I was sold on the first one, really. And I was like, oh yeah, for sure going to follow this woman. Yeah, that's and incredible. Then, and then a while ago, actually. And then um, out of the blue, pun intended, <laughs> I get a message from you and I can't remember exactly what it was that I was doing, but I squealed. I was yes. like, oh my goodness, she like messaged me. And then, wait, she followed me as well. And I felt like I had like a little fangirl, like go across 5,000 moment where I was like shimmying in my bathroom. Just like, uh -huh. So good. Like <laughs> so good. I'm dying. It's like I, I messaged you and then it was, you had like a million things going on and we were like, I don't know, when are we going to do this? Let's at least have a hang first. Yeah before we do each other's podcasts. Yeah. And it just worked out that we do it today because you've been all over the place. It's nonstop these days. I want to hear about all of it. And I listened to the last episode that came out with Richard and oh man, it was <clears throat> like life-changing episode. It's with Richard and Robert. Yes. So powerful. Richard and, and Robert, they should one? start a group actually. Huh? Richard, Richard and Robert. Yes. Just start a group. Like, And then the next podcast that's coming out is Richard and Zach Bush. So that combo, and that was from the live podcast that we did. So we're like, like this is the like the team that has been helping behind the scenes to really birth these visions out into the world. And w what I really put emphasis on is the media as medicine and how it finds its way. Into That's the I love that phrase, mm. media as medicine. I've never heard that. Asria Becker, she was the one that first coined that that term, and she it's just spread for from those of like. Okay, we've become the media now. People don't wake up and they don't look at the news anymore. They go on Instagram stories and they like check out what other people are doing. And what would it look like if we actually felt that responsibility, the ability to respond to say, you know what, we've become the media and what kind of story do I want to tell? Woo. How crazy. I was at the gym this morning and you know how you get on one of the machines and it has, sometimes there's TV playing? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And I hadn't used this machine before. And for some reason, it was on the local news. And all they were talking about, Blue, was like crime Mm -hmm. and fear. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this is insanity. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen it for so long. You can choose to tune it out or to not look at it. Mm -hmm. And I just thought, wow, it's really, I don't know, maybe it's the dying breath of Mm -hmm. the old media. Mm -hmm. And now media as medicine is so important. And it was during the pandemic that I started using my platform to heal. I didn't understand it at at the time. I just began waving my hands around with incense. And it was later when after I received good feedback that I took Reiki classes. But I was like, dang, it's really profound for someone with a large following Mm -hmm. to give a fuck Mm -hmm. about their audience. And the inspiration that ripples from you, it covers such a wide range. And there's something unique that you're bringing to the table in the sense of, I mean, go, you lay down some like hot bars, like... Oh my goodness. All of us are just like vitamin B, vitamin C, vitamin. Well, and we're all just like kind of like getting it and, and really enjoying it. But also at the same time, when you do those like, because it's just a little bit of context if you if you don't follow it yet, because if you don't follow it, I don't even know what you're doing. Um, but, um, so I'm scrolling through the gram, right? We're scrolling, we're scrolling, boom. All of a sudden you're like, hold on one second. I'm just going to. And then you start like, literally going into my field and I get like it's like ASMR like I get like tingles and shivers and I feel you just taking a moment and just cleansing the aura and then setting it with a spray and I'm thinking okay well she knows like some shamanic stuff here because there are layers to energetic research for people and a lot of my work is also in the shamanic space behind the scenes and what you're doing is deeply shamanic. And I actually looked at your gene keys and you got one of the most shamanic gene keys of all 64 gene keys in your chart. Really? Which is sacrifice. And we're talking talk about that. This is why I was so, I mean, I'm excited to come in general, but I, <laughs> the world is so new to me because I don't know if you know about my past with uh, dealing with a record label. And in my younger years, I had another band called Carmen with a K, which was like short for karma. At mm-hmm. the time, I thought it was just a cool word. Mm-hmm. Did not know that it was a literal karmic thing. Um, but yeah, it's it's been quite a journey to get here. And I'm very much, I would consider myself new to the woo. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I grew up woo. Christian, a very like suppressed Christian upbringing. Mm-hmm. And I hated mm-hmm. religion and spirituality for the longest time. And I was so deeply curious about the occult that I thought, oh, I'm just rebelling by researching witchcraft. It must be because I'm, you know, a bad person or something. But I was so, you know, genuinely interested in it. Mm-hmm. So I'm just grateful to be. The, the fact that you even use the word shamanic, I'm like, please tell me everything. <laughs> I want to know. <laughs> it's deeply enlaced in the core of your being. Um, and it's in the nature of who you are. So it's a more so like a returning home uh, as opposed to, finding something new. Yeah. Um, that and, discovery has become yeah. my favorite part. And that's the only reason I started a podcast because I was like, there's people out there that must have this adventure ahead of them too. Mm-hmm. And it wouldn't have been nice to have, I mean, I would have loved to have found you back when I was mm-hmm. in that fear cycle of, oh, am I allowed to do this? Totally, totally. Like breaking through the free programming and <clears throat> that kind of just like leads me into my first question with you. Uh... So there's something, and like I said before the intro, like what it is that you emanate is a claiming. There is like a deeply rooted sense of self that is like, I'm here. Mm. You are claiming your position and you are allowing yourself to take up space. And this is something specifically with women that Mm. is very deeply challenging, specifically if you have religious programming on top of it. So like religious programming, if you have religious parents or you grow up in the church, Um, And there is a certain way like this is right and this is wrong and we're operating in this binary experience. And so what happens when we're no longer around that kind of environment, we still oscillate with our own consciousness that I'm living in this binary of there being a right and a wrong so that when I do something wrong, I get I, I tell myself off. And so that will drift us further away from being in the claiming of this is who I am. And so I'd love to hear from from your perspective what that journey has been like from people pleaser Mm. into full claiming. I mean, most recently, it was a narcissistic relationship that pulled me out. I thought I was good, you know, and it, so it has been a long, a long one. I think initially it was uh, escaping my small town life in Nebraska 
to Boston. I went to music school at Berkeley College of Music in Boston. And that was a big step going from a town of 6,000 to like a major city. Mm -hmm. And there was a lot of fear. You know, my family was so worried that I was going to get, you know, hurt or somebody's going to mug me or whatever. It was very, um, it's, it was very, I remember just putting up all the blocks and this is when you start to suppress and repress all of your feelings about it. And you just say, this is when that claiming began. Mm -hmm. Cause I said, there is no way that this is not, I'm, I'm not meant for this. this. I had such an urge. I left behind a relationship with a guy that I thought I was definitely going to end up with. Mm -hmm. And, um, of course now looking back, I was like, Oh, that was a, my, one of my first narcissistic relationships. And got it to music school and was immediately embraced by my peers and got a few, I had three jobs, you know, so financially I was independent. And it wasn't until I blew up on YouTube, mm -hmm. like right after graduating, it was like 2008. It was one of our first recessions of our young lifetimes. Mm -hmm. And it was so scary and signed a record deal. And I thought, wow, I've, I got everything I've ever wanted. And I was still really unhappy. And it was then that I started, you know, doing the work on myself. So it is also a very much a privilege to have the bandwidth to even uncover that duality you're talking about. Right. I feel like you can't, if you're worried about making ends meet or, you know, if I hadn't come from a middle-class family, like, I don't know if I would have had even this amount of healing. Mm -hmm. It's really, it's really why I chose the name Queen Herbie too, that claiming and then Herbie actually means warrior. Mm -hmm. And Herbie is the mascot of the Nebraska Cornhusker is where I'm from. So it's like, I'm always remembering this was my journey. And if you ever feel like you're not making progress, like that's very humbling. Mm -hmm. So I started digging into witchcraft and magic and um, alchemy. And what else did I love? I love the emerald tablets. I got into like some real cute occult stuff. Mm -hmm. Much of it I didn't understand. Uh, and then I found the David Hawkins books, which are like the scale of consciousness. This mm -hmm. guy just maps uh, all the vibrations from shame at the bottom all the way to, uh, I think it's peace at the top, uh, enlightenment. And it was the first time it was starting to make sense to me. And I felt like, oh, here's where I am vibrationally. And then how do you raise your vibration? This is fascinating. And this doesn't feel, he always used references from the Bible. So I thought, oh, all these dudes were talking about the same things. <laughs> So that's where my journey started unraveling. And then I realized that my Carmen karma era was ending and it was terrifying. Like everything I ever wanted is now, I don't want this anymore. And what, where am I going from here? And I'm working with my partner, Nick, who we're now married and we've survived this wild ride. We were on Saturday Night Live. Like it was very traumatizing five years, but also incredible experience. And that's when I was like, okay, I'm going to start my own solo project and see what the queen has to say if I claim my my uh royalty for the first time because as a people pleaser you have very low self-worth that's kind of how um somebody on the narcissism spectrum could easily attach to you it's almost like a magnet and so forcing you to heal mm -hmm. and so that was a wild experience and I thought I was done but no up until recently still going through it still yeah. learning yeah and I've heard uh, the stronger the woman, the stronger the call for the nurse. Nurse. Yes. Oh, yes. So, you know, th that's a whole other topic that you and I can talk about. I'm a delicious with. prey. <laughs> totally. <laughs> because I, got I some... mean, you would be delicious too. <laughs> if I was a narcissist, I would totally. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've, I've had my own experience. And it's like, oh. um, It's just and... wild. You don't realize that something like that is possible and yeah. you're like naive and we're such positive, bright lights or whatever. 100%. Yeah, the the darkness is is deep, but that means there's just as great a potential on the other side. Right, exactly. And one thing that I f I feel was an incredible lesson from moving away from that is, what was it that I wanted from them? Yes, and it was to be accepted. Yes, by them. And what would it look like to fully accept oneself and to actually recognize that because of this reflection, I've now been shown a space where I wasn't choosing myself. And in that choosing, which is the claiming that I'm that I'm referring to within you, which which has rippled inspiration to all of us. Like we we witness you 
from the frame of we don't know the context of your journey. We don't know the sacrifice, the death, the purification, the rebirth, the integration, the full <laughs> cycle of what it's taken multiple times yeah. to get to this position where you're you're in front of a mic and yeah. you're like laying it down. However, what it does is the radiance of Queen Hervey highlights in us where we're not fully claiming our full self and that is medicine so maybe it'd be triggering or whether it's um, recognizing the trigger is actually also the medicine in itself mm. because it's going to trigger okay you know what i can actually step more into my fullest expression of my fullest nature because that's the permission slip that that that, that emanates out of you and with a name change, as I've also changed my name and, and stepped into this sort of like character, like blue. Yeah. Um, Your rapper name. Huh? Your rapper name. Yeah. <laughs> my rapper. P.S. We're going to be working on it. Deja blue. On my throat from down to Mars. Like <laughs> yeah. um, so uh, with the name change, do you feel like that allowed you to step more into your authenticity or do you feel like it stepped you away from your authenticity of who you are behind the scenes? Or do you feel like it's starting to merge? It's funny because I originally chose the name Herbie. Mm -hmm. I thought I want a masculine name. I need to like step into this power more. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> it was my partner and then a couple of my like uh, my business people at the time were like, but you just go with queen, just go queen Herbie. You know, it was just like, at, they all kind of told me to add this, all these men in my life, straight white men. I was like, really? Great. <laughs> but it felt good. And I thought, okay, if I can work my way up to feeling authentic ownership of queen, I'm going to do it. And so it was, at the beginning, it wasn't, I wasn't very confident about it. And there's times still where I like to go by Herbie because she feels a little bit more loose and, and easy and mm -hmm. silly um, so two, it's almost like two different personas mm. that can emerge, but queen is, you know, she is the, she's the ultimate. She's, um, just unapologetic and very cunty as we like to say. Mm -hmm. Yes. So the, essentially like the, the nature of stepping into calling yourself a queen was there any part of you that felt like imposter syndrome or like, okay, am I actually going to do this? Because that is a bold statement in itself, <laughs> which I respect. <laughs> like it really felt before when we were preparing for the podcast, like it felt like the, we had a queen arriving. The queen you know? is coming. It was, like yeah. a, it was a big moment. And, and that is ultimately the power of the permission slip you've given yourself is that it speaks before you've even arrived. Sure. And yet the claiming from I've listened to your podcast House of Herbie by the way um <laughs> uh, with you with it's with you Nick yeah. um as as the house of it and there's been a there's been a journey from the people pleaser into like into calling yourself a queen yes like, so how was that process around you actually claiming the word queen one major uh, step for me for claiming queen was a Carolyn Miss book mm. called Sacred Contracts so she goes into all the archetypes and I was like, oh, one that I really resonated with was queen. And I thought, okay, I need to really research what it is that about a queen that I feel that I'm sort of destined to be. Mm -hmm. And it was so regal and so demanding and so um, sort of intimidating, but also had this huge compassion. Mm -hmm. Like queens are to be of service. And so that was a pivotal, pivotal moment when I, thought for the first time, oh, I, if I could be in service of people, because as a pop star, you think the opposite. You're like, people are here to serve me. You think a queen expects mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. but there is always that charity beneath it. Um, that's sort of the root of it. It's kind of a bizarre archetype, but Carolyn Miss, that book, Sacred Contracts, so, so fascinating. Mm. She has you do this whole exercise where you meditate and put a different archetype for each of your um, astrological houses. So you can actually do a chart of your, look at us, we're just making all the charts. Mm -hmm. But your archetype chart is super helpful. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like in your fourth house, you're a pirate, right? <laughs> super fun. Mm -hmm. it's, it, the Jinkies is also based off of archetypes. Really? It's, it's, it's basically a breakdown of the 11 archetypes that predominantly run through you. And then within each archetype, there's a shadow, there's a gift. And that's what's called a CD, which is where maximum amount of light is entering your DNA. And light is just information. And so you have access to higher levels of information 
running through your body when you understand the archetype of who you are. And the, a queen is 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 not necessarily in those words in the jinkies, but that's that's definitely an archetype. And then then within the queen essence, there's a shadow, there's a gift, and then there's the CD, which is the shadow of the queen is barking orders, and mm-hmm. you see that in Alice in Wonderland where she's like off with your head. We love her. Like, you know, the, <laughs> Sometimes I'm her. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, it, that, and that's radar, okay. It will oscillate up and down the spectrum. You yeah. know, just sort of like move up and down, and then eventually a queen is a queen like Princess Diana archetype. The yeah. queen of people's hearts. Yeah. And that claiming that you have access to is allowing um, others to be able to tap more into their power and ultimately that service. That's so cool. That's really, you know, that's the, I guess, the still egoic payoff that I get from it, right? If I do an aura cleanse and there's like hundreds of people, like this changed the course of my day. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm still letting go of that too because mm-hmm. that's very exciting. But um but it's been quite a journey moving from that place of worship me to, oh, what if I just take care of y'all? Mm-hmm. That's fun. Mm-hmm. So with that in mind, what would be for you the dream, vision, goal that is the direction of your service from this point forward? I'm very much into big pioneering energy. I like the future. I like technology. So I'm really excited to see like AI doesn't scare me. I know a lot of artists are worried about AI and it makes me really excited to know that the internet is what gave me the ability to live the life that I'm living. So I could not have been seen by millions of people any other way. Back when I was in college and couldn't afford to tour, it was like, oh, this is how I reach people. And so the internet as a tool excites me I think in the future if I can either it's me doing it or it's like I put together a we already have a community growing on House of Herbie of talented healers if I can make that service available to more people Mm -hmm. that's sort of my major goal obviously music being the loudspeaker for it and sort of like our (laughs) our like funnel to welcome people into this coven or whatever is happening Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, but I love the intersection of technology and all of this Mm-hmm. that's a really beautiful and refreshing lens to see on it specifically coming from an artist because that's one of the biggest fears with AI is that it's going to completely replace artists but what I'm hearing from you is that it's more so a synthesis of working alongside yeah. and utilizing it to enhance more of your expression and if it wasn't already for the internet then then your audience or the way that you can impact a million people yeah. just sort of from the comfort of your own home would not be available and so it's a beautiful way to actually see it as a gift as opposed to fight it because ultimately it's here yeah. you know it, 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 it's here and it's coming and there's nothing really we can do about it so ultimately we can either soften deeper into it and use it for our next glow up yes or we can be afraid of it and uh, and resist it and fight it but ultimately it, it's here so it's just that resistance is just going to create more issues with with our relationship with it in, in general so fascinating mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I remember when it first started becoming popular and I, I felt that fear. I felt that um, pushback from artists like, please don't use AI queen like it's bad. And and I was like, yeah, it's definitely I can see what you're saying. Absolutely. Um, I hope that in the future artists can learn how learn like the language to get the AI to do things for them to allow their creativity to bloom faster. Mm-hmm. For me, it's like I'm all about world building. So we even did a Queen of Hearts project with Mad Queen. And so to think that I could have been like in my castle or something and you could put on a headset and be there with me for the release party, that's very exciting. But I don't personally know how to build digital worlds. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what I'm looking forward to. Mm. I'm excited. I'm just really excited to continue to watch the evolution of your platform, your artistry and your expression. Uh, And also there has been that weaving of of what you referred to before, sort of like getting into witchcraft, um, into the platform with just like, you know, the energy cleanses and all of that sort of stuff. But I would love to hear a little bit about your journey about, you you said you were raised in, was it the Christian church? Yes. It was the Christian church. Mm -hmm. So you're raised in the Christian church, but then there's also this direction of going, but wait, hold on. I'm fascinated in the occult. I'm fascinated in witchcraft. So what is your relationship with that That now that you're a little bit more established along the lines of, oh, I'm just breaking the rules and I'm doing this as like sort of like playing around with it to more actually that this has become a, a way of life or a part of, of who you are? Absolutely. So it was a lot of fear. You know, I've spoken to a lot of people that have religious trauma or religious upbringings that were very suppressive. And it, it's like you're scared to look into the witchcraft stuff and then you start 
realizing that it sort of all resonates the same, right? Even if you dive into Buddhism and Taoism, you're like, oh, this is like, everybody was saying the same stuff. Mm -hmm. And so that part helped me get over like the rage. I had to process like a lot of anger, like they lied to me, you know? And then once I got over that, I was like, wow, you can literally just put together your own, whatever feels good for you, what feels true to you. Um, And that's, that's essentially what led me to research reincarnation too, which was mind blowing. Mm -hmm. Cause like the big tenet of Christianity is that you have one chance and it's, Either you go to hell or, you know, heaven. And when I realized they were talking about vibration, mm. right? Like you can be on earth right now experiencing hell mm-hmm. if you choose it or if you, you know, shut yourself off from your true nature. So there's all these things in the Bible now that I'm like, oh, that's bars. Oh, that's what they were trying to say. Mm. Um, but there was a lot of anger to work through, like, you know, understanding that um, there was just a lot missed in translation. Mm-hmm. And then you you go to Sunday school, you go to these you put little kids in a room and you like scare them with these stories without getting the actual essence, I think, of what someone like Jesus might have meant. Mm-hmm. Did you experience judgment? Did you experience um because I feel like the word witchcraft. Yes. Oh, so comes with so, so much taboo. <laughs> we know we're looking at like between three and nine million women burned and <laughs> killed in our history not that long ago not in the grand scale ago. of things because they had a relationship with nature or they really loved to put herbs together and make a tea that helped them heal their liver, for example. Like this is just a, a deep, intricate na- relationship with nature or the elements or something that is non-physical to have a conversation with or working with 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 children or with um, animals. And yet, not that long ago, that was, okay, well, she's a witch and she must be burnt. So now, mm. in today's time of a, was in the Christian church, moved into more of the witchy nature and that the, the, ultimately really what it comes down to is a wise woman that is allowing the birth of her intricate understanding based off of her intuition, not from the outside in, but from the inside out, which is the word which it derives from wise women. Yes. How was your experience with the judgment around you even using that word yes. or stepping and claiming that, even whether it's from family or from people that followed you before you went into this? What sure. was your experience around that? I do, as a, as a former people pleaser, I do a really good job of like slowly easing people. I'm a very good manipulator. I, when I learned that people pleasers were as manipulative as the opposite side of the spectrum, I was like, oh, that's what this is. Like me constantly trying to skew people's perceptions. So the blow of judgment was a little bit softer because I slowly started saying, I like crystals. And oh my gosh, have you ever looked into astrology? It's so interesting. <laughs> When deep down, I'm like, obsessed, you know, (laughs) witchcraft. (laughs) So I did this like people pleasing thing that of course is ultimately unsustainable and toxic, but it helped me to sort of build a bridge because I didn't want to like burn these relationships with people either. I want other people to have this amazing truth as well. It's beautiful and so helpful. It's their choice ultimately. Mm -hmm. But I thought, okay, well, yeah, when my dad's sick in the hospital, like I'll bring a piece of fluorite and, you know, cleanse the bed, Mm -hmm. you know, and people were laughing at me, but when your parent is in the hospital, everybody's so stressed anyway, they're just sort of accepting. Mm -hmm. So there wasn't really any judgment. And then of course I brought the fluorite home and it broke in a million pieces. I was like, thanks. There's all these confirmations that can help pull you through the judgment, even when it feels hard, when people hate when you use the word witch or whatever but mm-hmm. now ariana grande is using it you know it's like it's hitting mainstream culture which is really encouraging mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. hopefully you know it's not of course we're going to misinterpret it as humans we always manage to find ways to fuck it up but <laughs> but it's great to mm-hmm. see that uh mm-hmm. sort of happening slowly mm-hmm. yeah it's becoming a little bit more at least talked about and then broken down without the the projection of the fear programming around it yeah, and the more stigma. so the reclamation. Um, and someone said to me once, her name is Issa Bornan, and I really just resonated deeply with it. There was a moment when I was publicly being blasted over mainstream media as this witch. And um, when? What it, year was this? It was last year. Not last year. And, <laughs> and, and 
I was like sitting with it and it was sort of like Midwestern American uh-huh. like making these articles about like this blue of earth, this is wit- her witch, she's a witch. And I really sat with it and I was like, okay, if we're going to play with archetypes slash labels, um, do I resonate to the core of my being with the archetype of a witch? Mm-hmm. And I don't feel fully claimed in it. Like, you know, sure. fully claiming queen. Like, right. I resonate more with that frequency than I do with the type of witch. Sure. Like I'm not a, witch, a green witch of the garden. I don't bring herbs together and make tinctures and potions. I love it, but it's not like my main focus. Sure. But what she said to me, she goes, I don't actually think you're a witch blue, but I do think that you're that witch is needed. And I was like, oh, hold on. Something's dropping in right now. Like I'm feeling this one. Hold on. I'm going to synthesize this for a second. Like, yeah, like, I'm just going to put myself back together. Because if you actually train yourself to listen to the energetics of the space, that which is needed is maybe there's a friend that is sharing something and it's like deeply vulnerable and they're having a moment and some really strong feminine motherly energy needs to be in the space and just like allow that archetype to be activated within myself and then to bring that forward. And then recognizing that sometimes we may be working in a group and there's no sense of direction and some strong blue daddy energy, like some masculine, like laying down the raw law and like the, the rules is going to be needed in the space. But it's a, a byproduct of listening deeply and allowing ourselves to have access to many different archetypes. Yes. And so the different archetypes that are available, like the two archetypes that you've really pulled forward within this new container of the frequency of your name, Queen, which has its own archetype and its own frequency. And then there's Herbie. And Herbie can also bring the goofy and the silly and the eternal child and the playfulness. And that combination, which is a royalty and a a straight spine and a clear voice and a strong eye contact. And I know who I am. I know why I'm here. And I know how I serve essence. Mm. Partnered with the eternal child and the playfulness Mm. is a really sweet combination and package that then when anybody utters your name, when you're not even in the space, it holds that vibrational charge and that continues to reinforce that nature out into the space wow so this is the power of a name change or the the vibrational charge of our name and our resonance Mm -hmm. to it or the archetypes that we associate with so within the queen uh, within the witch essence i didn't really necessarily fully resonate with it but the that which is needed allowed the shapeshifter energy that (laughs) to to be in the mold of like okay what a deep deep level of listening and not necessarily with my ears because i i don't hear everything with my ears but with my feeling and so that kind of brings me into another point around the core of your gene keys chart right at the center it's our core wound and our superpower mm-hmm. your sq is empathy and it's it's really and it's it's partnered with um s- sacrifice and sacrifice is sacrificing of one's own individual identity for something of service to the space or the world of that's needed at large. You literally are the hollow bone and the hollow bone is calling something in. It's like a divine intervention that's like, whether it's a song idea or something that you're going to be speaking into that you feel like would be powerful for people to hear, but it sort of finds you. It moves through this divine will of like the sacrifice of your own identity to be that which is needed Mm. to then allow it to flow through with a deep level of empathy, which is partnered with your compassion, which is the queen of hearts Mm. so this is right in the core so for somebody that's outward facing (laughs) somebody that it's it's reaching millions of people with your music how do you partner your empathy and i'm not talking about like oh i'm empathic i can feel i can feel your emotions it's Mm. that you literally are processing other people's emotions as if they are your own right so to be an outward facing public figure while having this deep rooted empathy Mm. How has your journey been with allowing yourself to stay true to yourself, Mm -hmm. keeping your empathy alive, recognizing it's your superpower, while simultaneously being discerning with how many people get your energy? Mm. I've been typically pretty poor at at discernment thus far. Mm -hmm. It's it's just becoming something that I'm good at now. And... um, yeah, wow, I've never heard it put that way. That was beautiful. Thank you. Um, I think also songwriting is a funny little thorn for me because it is the way that I take that empty bone and pull it into the now, even though music isn't it funny because music is not physical. Mm-hmm. So it's like this very strange ethereal thing that just floats. We just, it floats around us. Mm-hmm. You can hit play on your phone, I guess. That's the only physical component now. But when I'm choosing what songs to write, a lot of times, like my biggest song right now is called Sugar Daddy. 
And it's about sex work. And I've never experienced life as a sex worker, but I felt like I was able to get inside of that. Like you said, I was yeah. able to actually feel what that was and, and, and dictate that onto a song, to a beat. And it felt, it was so easy to write, mm-hmm. which I thought was interesting. And now that's kind of a new approach I'm taking in my writing is mm-hmm. rather than write about my experiences, which is also good. And, and that's maybe how I'm balancing it is I do, I have a song called Black Sheep, which is about my upbringing. And I have um, a song called F Myself, which is um, sort of how an empathetic public facing artist handles haters, mm-hmm. right? It's right. like, I'm literally telling the person like, oh babe, I love you so much. I'm sorry you feel that way. I know your time could be spent doing something so brilliant. Like, don't even bother coming here and trying to tear me down. Like, I'm good. Mm. Are you good? <laughs> I No, I really love you, babe. Like, that's kind of the, the song that I had to write for me, for my experience. But it's mm. funny, I've had success both ways. And so maybe that's the songwriting, as difficult as it is, I always complain about it, Blue. Like, ask my partner, Nick. He's always like, you do because he knows if I write songs, that's where the gold is. That's how we reach more people and how you become more successful in this world, apparently. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't always feel like writing songs. And sometimes it's really challenging mm-hmm. emotionally. Mm-hmm. It's like mm-hmm. you're birthing something yep. that's yep. not necessarily yours. Mm-hmm. And I think that's also why your music is so relatable. We can feel it. Like, not just with our ears, but like hearing it. It's like a medicine. Yeah. It is it, it is a dose of medicine for us to be able to receive it and then become more of who we are. And ultimately, I think that no matter what avenue of expression, whether we're an astrology reader or we're a pop star or a rapper <laughs> or a podcaster or whatever it is, it's not necessarily about what it is that we do. It's about who we be while we do. Mm. And so if the empathy is activated right in the core of your chart, your ability to tap into the feelings and the emotional state of an other being, even if you've not lived that life, and then become the vessel for it to move through you as mm-hmm. if you are living it yourself so that it holds that charge to then speak into pockets where people could actually be liberated through a song mm-hmm. and it be a dose of medicine for them. This is now a limitless capacity mm-hmm. because of your skill set and your empathy. Mm. And that combined is going to ensure that wherever you put your attention and intention, you're going to allow it to move through you so that you can just literally be like Codemaster 5000 sprinkler system. Just like, <laughs> and I was like, got the transmission from Queen Herbie and I could be more of myself. Oh, yeah. And we put some eucalyptus oil in the system. So when you get hit with the sprinkles, it's yeah. like very, you know, effervescent and lovely. <laughs> oh, man. This is why touring is going to be so important. And mm-hmm. for a long time, I was resistant to tour because my experience for five years with my old musical project was airplanes every day. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't at this place consciously. I wasn't aware of what was happening. I was drinking a lot of alcohol and I was, you know, I wasn't facing any of this stuff from my childhood. And so now that I've healed it, I'm still sort of in denial, but we are working on a tour because that's where I can be a sprinkler for Mm -hmm. a lot of people. Yeah. Straight up. And at the same time, your discernment of going, okay, if I'm going to go on tour, my environment's really important to yes. me. Um, <laughs> I, you know I'm going to be bringing my silk pillow. Like, <laughs> and my poodles. Yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> to ensure that then that you can have the most co- cohesive environment so that you can continue to dish the medicine. Because we're going to need you around for a hot minute, girl. Like, Thanks. for real. There's a whole lot of people that need your medicine. And I'm going to... I've got your gene keys chart Let's printed go. out. So I'm just going to pull it. Like, here's one I made earlier. I've always wanted to say that. I am the luckiest human being in Topanga right now. Look at this. Oh, man. I'm so excited. I don't own a print that so Lily spoiled. Ashwell does. And she's the queen of organization. She printed this out for me. Thank you so much. Shout out Lily to Ashwell the whole team. Over. By the way, your team is pretty impeccable. Honestly, I think that's my, the word. My team are lighting me up from the inside yeah. out. They're the coolest, funnest, witchiest. How are you profound, discerning? I need you to teach me about discernment. Huh? Discernment. How did you know uh, these were your peeps? 
So, <laughs> oh, we got it. Well, Amy's her. hella good at twerking. <laughs> Have you seen her ass? <laughs> it's a good one. It's a good one. I'm not going to lie to you. I said that. That's out there now. <laughs> um, <laughs> you are welcome. Everyone go find her on Instagram. She's the twerk queen underscore twerk queen. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I made that up. She's not on Instagram. Under She's that changing name. it right okay. now. <laughs> <laughs> How I found this women? Well, I think that it's a sweet combination of that they've done a lot of deep internal work. Okay. And I've done a lot of deep internal work yeah. and it's got to the point where we don't necessarily get pulled in by appearance, but we do by essence. Mm. And when you give yourself full permission to find your unique lane in life, your, your vibe attracts your tribe. Ooh. But if you're not being authentic, it's like ordering a package and it not being able to be delivered because you're not home. Like, how are you going to get your delivery? So that was a song. You home. see what I'm saying? Okay, I should, I'm going to just take notes when this comes out <laughs> so I can write these songs. I'll email you so we can... Let's make yeah. music, P.S. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Why not? I'm Why here not? for that. I just got one of those MPC things, which yeah. is like a... It's an OG, like the reason hip hop, you know, is so sample-based and magical. And so I'm learning that. So I'm going to download some sounds. We'll get some... I will play We'll make some too. things. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so everyone listening to this, you're just going to slide into Queen Herbie's DMs and just say blue and Queen Herbie for music, please. Queen X Blue. <laughs> you're going to get blown up now. Vibe. <laughs> yes. Okay, so I've done some highlighting. I feel very professional with this in my hand. Mm. Um, what we're looking at here is, first and foremost, you are what we call a dancer. And I don't know if you, if you, um, a know dancer? What the, yeah, a dancer. It literally, it says dancer here in your life's work. And so your life's work is silence, but it's in the theme of it being a dancer. And a dancer isn't necessarily like somebody that is actually dancing. Mm. However, it usually translates. Those that are dancers love a good dance. Okay. And I've seen you dancing on your Instagram as well. Oh, my right? dancing is very unusual. It's fabulous. Thank you. Bopping around with the most outrageous outfits. It's that child chaotic thing with the queen thing. Oh, well, beauty and chaos, it's side by side, my love. It's the best. <laughs> <laughs> okay, dancer. <laughs> and the dancer is like, it's the entrepreneur, like full, full on, you know, it's you got to do what it is that you love because your vitality is coming from the inside out. And that is the essence of the queen is that I am pouring this from somewhere that that cannot be named. Uh. That that created all of this, that name behind the sun, like it is something greater than ourselves, but that inspiration is being pulled from that place. Mm. And if you're not honoring the pure uniqueness, this is actually found mm. in your silence. It is so important because uh. you have a very chaotic like not chaotic and like busy and there's a lot going on. There's a lot of energy projected into your life from, you know, people that have, uh, have tuned into your music and follow you and whatnot. Um, even when you're not around these humans, mm -hmm. they're still in your, in your psychic field. Right. And so it's so important that your pure originality is born from your silence. Mm. So it's important that like, if not once a day, you have like a pocket where no one's going to interrupt you. Mm. There's no cell phone noise. It's you and that pure silence because it's in it's in it's in pure silence is where pure originality is born, and this is the birthplace of the artist. Mm. This is the I'm not recycling now what I've been heard from other people, but I am I'm pure originality. No one has ever done it before. And no one will ever do it again because it's coming through your own unique channel, um, and also it's directly linked in what we call like a, your pearl sequence, which is your brand mm. um, truth. You're here to restore us back to the closest thing that we can call truth. Mm -hmm. And we are swimming in a sea of illusions. We're swimming in stories and distortion. And because of this direct connection, everybody has this direct connection. It's very strong in your intuition. Mm -hmm. It's that that witchy, that witch tuition. Um, and that truth is also born from your inquiry. It's like, it's the study, it's the, it's the esoteric, it's the understanding, it's, a, it's the unpacking astrology and gene keys and whatever it is that comes into your field, that's going to inspire you. And in the silence, that's when your truth locks in. Mm. The more you rap about things that are so deeply true to you, the more your brand is going to make a massive impact in the world. And this is like the unique flavor that is presented to you. That's so cool. Um, yeah, I, alone time. Wow. Recently, I was like, I got to demand it. Sorry, everybody. Yeah, love y'all. I got to so just important. be alone. You know, but that's how you naked other people. in a room burning a really expensive candle. Mm -hmm. 
with a journal usually or blank pages, doodling, mm-hmm. listening to weird, you know, singing bowl stuff. <laughs> and I get great ideas, sometimes too many. Mm-hmm. It, it, where your service is born from. Mm. If you don't give yourself that silence and that yeah. alone time, your service will start to dry out. <sighs> Wild. Super important. Mm. Um, and then also you're here to blow your own mind over and over and over and over and over again. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> it is fun. I what do, does that look like to you? To me, to me, it's like constantly surprising myself. Yeah. So I'll, I'll like, I blew up for rapping. Okay. So I was in my t- early 20s and I blew up on the internet, basically imitating Busta Rhymes, one of my favorite rappers. <laughs> and he raps very fast. And so people were shocked at this and I didn't think it was that shocking but what I did think was shocking was how much attention and how much that changed my life yeah. forever mm-hmm. so that continuously surprising myself has been really fun it's, t- it's tricky though because I spend that time alone and, and meditate on it and I think okay this is what it's going to be and then it's always a surprise it's always something totally different right so getting used to that but then there's that like there's like a high off of that <laughs> right it's like oh <laughs> Hey, I didn't know this person yesterday, but now here she is and here she's we- bringing it through and it's hot and it's fresh and it's new and it's never been seen before and never will be re- replaced again. Yeah. It's the my haircut always changing, you know, did not think I would ever have this haircut, but it's so empowering. It's brilliant and I- it feels very authentic. Thank you. <laughs> so yeah, and, and I said like, I kind of shifted it and said living to blow your own mind, but what it actually says is you need to constantly surprise yourself. <laughs> so yeah. annoying man see I roll I love it it's you have that feeling like you're always co-creating then you're not alone that's a nice mm-hmm. it's a nice thing to be surprised yeah I mean I personally would want to co-create with that that created the fruit or the flower like look at the meticulous <laughs> intricate nature of a watermelon <laughs> I want that right like who's like, that hey, let's wanna, call them in hey uh, God <laughs> spirit Allah Buddha Krishna whatever you want to call it um, you want to co-create like I got some music I want to make and yeah. I was wondering if you want to like do the thing because you made a watermelon well good and I as of lately I've been exploring so many other things not just music I'm like how else can I create yeah you know so I got into like blending fragrances which is so fascinating next when you come visit me we'll blend a fragrance it's okay. so cool to experience to be on the what to be in the experience of like, oh. bl- like picking your bass notes and you're, it's just like music. Oh, There's yeah, a bass, mid and a top note. And you said you love cherry blossom. I have that. Yeah. So we can. Oh, I'm all, oh, I'm so excited. Maybe I just cut out like a couple of days. We'll, <laughs> we'll make, we'll make, a ne- we'll make some necklaces. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, I also saw you um, pouring resin and making. Oh no, this is, this is resin. Isn't and you, that so Did fun? you make that? I did. Oh. I'm getting, I, you know. Just surprising myself. Yes, exactly. That's literally it. It's like, instead of saying like, well, most people's version of a success is like, how much money did I make today? Or like, right. no, no, no. If you lay in bed and go, today I surprised myself four times, <laughs> yeah. you can give yourself a massive pat on the back uh, and know that you are a successful human. Wild. And That's just acknowledging from. my privilege too. I mean, the fact that I had some success early in life allows me to do resin. Mm-hmm. You know, not everybody has that uh, yeah. freedom, but <laughs> it's pretty fun. And bows. Yes. Oh, just that's brand new. How did you know? Oh, because you DM'd me about I it. I DM'd you. You were in and a I was giant like, bow in your head. And I'm like, tis the season for bow since 1990. Since the 90s. <laughs> oh, and the video of you dancing with your dad. How cute is my dad? I'm going to do that next time I'm home to see if I can force my dad to dance with me. That is so cute. <laughs> Come I on, I want dad. that. Yeah. <laughs> really special. Um, okay. So... Um, it also is talking about that the first is about facing your fear of actually not knowing yeah. what's to come. Yeah. So what's your relationship with the not knowing area? Ooh, it's the worst. Uh-huh. I used to say, uh, where there's a really good quote about it. It's like, certainty is absurd. You know, like not knowing something is awful, but like knowing is, is lame as mm-hmm. fuck. You want to you wanna like be surprised. So I have a lot of anxiety. Mm-hmm. I've, I've had uh, some really good therapists like help me figure that out. And then the silence, when I spend that time alone, I do, I did learn to, I took up a meditation practice, mm-hmm. which has been helpful and got really into Joe Dispenza lately. Whoa. Joe's a wizard. He's a, He's a wizard. Literal wizard. That's why I ended up on Gaia. That's why I found this. We're blaming Joe Dispenza for this. Was it Joe? It's Joe. So Joe planted the seed that then led you to Gaia, that then led you to watching my episode, that then led you to DMing me, that then led you to my garage. Yes. Now we're going to make necklaces. Joe Dispenza, big up my man. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) 
Yes, <laughs> yes. So that was very helpful mm-hmm. because, wow, if you can't master your own mind, if you can't get your heart and brain into coherence, mm-hmm. like you can't master anxiety, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to do that on my podcast too, is tell people how annoying and difficult it is to get a practice going. But mm-hmm. when you do it, kind of changes everything. Mm-hmm. Just wish it wasn't so tricky. Mm. Somebody once said to me, it's, uh, it's simple, but it's not easy. Yeah. It's pretty simple, but oh, there's some intricacy. There are layers. There is like past generational trauma, past lives, like, like what mom and dad still haven't processed that I'm now processing for you. And it's like that there's layers. And yet the simplicity is like, ultimately everything comes down to the root of fear or love. And yet within the simplicity, the complexities also in the same breath. But what I love about House of Herbie is that you, <laughs> you just, Lay it on the table of whatever's most alive and and go in in a very authentic nature to uncover deeper truths. And you're in the inquiry of, I'm sharing with you what's worked for me. This yes. is not the truth with a capital T. And yes. so, oh, that rhymed. See, <laughs> we're writing songs on this podcast it's happening. I'm going to go back with notes later and we're going to organize it together <laughs> to a melody. Yes. Uh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Never claiming to be an expert, but my curiosity mm-hmm. has gotten me really far. Mm-hmm. And having experienced now peace and, and, and having faced myself and then looking back out externally and being like, oh, we're in a society where it's, you know, distraction is like the number one thing that people are attracted to. And so if you're always distracted, you never do turn the camera in and look at yourself. It's mm-hmm. terrifying, actually. Once you've layered, we call it like the trauma croissant, mm-hmm. like turning the lens and looking at the layers of trauma is really terrifying. So... But that's the theme that I'm noticing within you is that every time you detect something, you go in. Oh, yeah. Yeah, now we're fearless. Now it's the only way forward. And yet, for, for most people, the only way is distracting themselves from yeah. feeling that thing. Yeah. So I think that's what separates victim consciousness to creative consciousness. Mm. And that's what creates you in that regal or the royalty that, that is embedded in the archetype of the queen. Mm which is that if I find curriculum, I'm going to get curious and go in. Mm -hmm. Not find curriculum, get afraid and distract. Yeah. And so that very difference of choice made over many, many micro moments is going to ensure that your life operates at a certain energetics that's going to bring people in and actually have uh, students or uh, admirers or people that look to you because those micro moments are actually a byproduct of the way that you create, show up, sing, and present yourself in the world. I love that. Which sets you up as unconsciously a leader. Oh, yeah. We just did an episode on leader. Being a leader, very annoying too. Very Mm -hmm. challenging. Lots of sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Um, But that was a really, really important thing for me to learn. Mm -hmm. And I'm still, again, you know, all of this is great. And she's making me sound real cool. (laughs) But I'm very much still like humbled at the process of this. Mm-hmm. Like I, there's times when I think I'm killing it and then like there'll be three, four days when I'm like, no idea what's happening. Yeah. You know, even this past week, I had some moments where I was like, what am I doing? Mm-hmm. You know? Well, it also answers that here in the old gene Here curious. it comes. <laughs> here it comes, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> here that I have something made earlier. It actually talks about your purpose. Oh, no. And um, I, I think that it's interesting because you said that. Um... Okay, this is a primary truth for you to digest. You will not really know the purpose of your life until you are older. God damn it. (laughs) See, this is the one I'm struggling. Actually, no, there's another one I'm struggling with. I'll ask you about. This is is a good thing. Yes. It's a good thing. Okay, okay. Okay, um, So it will be revealed to you progressively over the course of your life. Um, You need to have a great store of patience, Mm, of recognizing that even though you are destined for victory, you are destined, P.S., it says it here, it must be real, you are destined for victory. But it's the journey itself that matters. Yes. Because the mind is going to want to know. Oh, yeah. It's going to want to know the purpose. She is inquisitive. It's going to want to know the why. Yeah. But you pouring resin into those molds... (laughs) Is the why. <laughs> it's the journey. <gasps> oh, the resin. The yeah, the other day I was pouring some and I was like, this is the biggest waste of my time. But it's so I don't think so. I'm gonna have think... to I'm gonna have to counterbalance. Thank that. you. Thank you. I think that if that in its microcosm is that you softening into the process, not the goal. 
The goal would say this is a waste of my time. The process would say that actually I'm in my highest excitement and that's my contribution to the collective. <sighs> True. And so in the patience of softening into the journey, recognizing <laughs> that your victory, you're destined to victory and it's actually already here. Right. And when you become and you tap into that crone energy, you will see how every meticulous individual piece was directly aligned for you to become who you were to become. And I, if anything was ever anything different, you wouldn't be able to be that vision. And you're going to be like, oh, I can see it now. It's going to be something that doesn't exist in possibility right now. I already know. Because as my life has unfolded, it's like, this wasn't available five years ago. This wasn't here 10 years ago. I could not have done this, that, or the other. Right. So I know, I, I know this, um, but it's frustrating. Totally. Yeah. Totally. And, and, and when those moments of contriction or those like <clears throat> come up, it's just asking for that patience piece. Yeah. Everything's right on time. Nothing that is meant for you will never be held with held with, uh, from you. What is meant for you, there's nothing you can do for, to fuck it up. What is not meant for you, there's nothing you can do to make it happen. Boom. I'm all poor this resin with this bomb ass bow in my hair. I'm I have a time. heat gun now. We're getting the bubbles out. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> There's crazy. no bubbles in my resin. I am an evolved woman. <laughs> it's getting crazy in here. <laughs> <laughs> um uh, All right, what else have we got here in the Gene Keys? Uh, your evolution. So I sent this to the group before you got here. Oh, no. I know. I sent it to the group. <laughs> <laughs> I exposed you to the group. Uh, what you're here to learn, it's actually about working as part of a team. God damn it. See, yeah. this is the other one I struggle with. Mm. Well, this, it says that. <laughs> it certainly does. No, when I read this, I was like, oh, shit. You know? Yeah. And I think maybe a big a big um, blockage was the people pleasing thing, because mm -hmm. and not being discerning about who's in my circle. That's why I ask you, because you feel like you've put together a cute family here, and I I have a cute family too. Mm -hmm. And as demands grow, you want to grow your family. But now I'm just like wounded and terrified of adding people. Mm -hmm. I get that, and mm -hmm. I truly understand it. And that's something that I'm navigating at the moment is that mm -hmm. when I welcome somebody into my team, I welcome them to every single aspect and essence of my my life. Yeah. Even if like they're going through a, a challenging moment, yeah. I, I welcome them into my bed to sleep and be like, do you want to rest here? Like yeah. it literally get the entirety of me. And, and in the past, it's been painful because there have been people that have got on the inside and then used whatever information I've shared with them against me. And and it's been, it's, it's, it's been like deeply painful. And at the same time, one of my greatest experiences is co-creating something with a shared goal intention and attention and and for those that are like-minded individuals to co-create it together like a hive yes um and it it it, <clears throat> it talks about this that your challenge in life is being such a strong individual and at the same time needing to work within a group right so it oscillates back and forth yeah can someone else pour the epoxy huh can can i train someone else to pour the epoxy yeah you know can i trust them it's like mm -hmm. i'm such a perfectionist too yeah. that's real and in it, it is group situations that are likely to push you out of your comfort zone. Yep. There we go. Um, and it is therefore this area that is so precious for you. And in time, it will take one of the group. It will become one of your greatest strengths. Okay. And so I sent this to the group, but not not just this, but like learning to listen to others will be a key for you since you have such a strong internally felt direction. Mm -hmm. Right. That's that queen that. That she just listens to her guidance that is found in silence and pure originality is beyond from that pure channel. Um, and yet your ability to listen to others in the space of those that you choose to have a seat at your table mm. will support you in, um, in becoming one of your greatest strengths. Mm. So essentially, you're like the queen bee of the hive. <sighs> but she need a hive. She's got a nice big booty. Very furry. <laughs> We love the queen bee. Yeah. Facts. <laughs> Very furry. I won't be a queen bee. She got a big booty. <laughs> and furry stripes. Oh, that's what it is. Okay, I need to get a fur coat with the yellow and black stripes. <laughs> your vibe attracts your tribe. Yes. So the... the, the if I the, put the coat on, then we'll definitely and then find our wash people. And flock. Yeah. And you're going to be like, oh, these are my people. <laughs> um... And then it also talks about if you refuse to interact with others, uh, oh, sorry, if you, yeah, if you refuse to interact with others patiently, your yeah. genius will never be heard. Right. Um, the, the best way is to work with a group where you have already built trust and understanding. Mm -hmm. And once that trust and understanding has been cultivated, that takes time. It does. This queen bee from the inside out is going to really open up and that queen bee nourishes the entire hive. That's so cool. So this is what you're here to learn. There's so much here. I I know that we I want to honor your time, and also we are 
we are getting to that point where yes. we have almost completed an entire episode. I don't know how that happened. I know. It just flew by, even with the leaf blowers. It's like... Killed it. Uh, yeah. Love uh, it. Um, the leaf blowers. Yeah, they were coming in hot, but then more so if you like were to actually just create this this perspective that maybe they're like some white noise that is supposed to be like calm in my root chakra. I was on t- watching TV the other day. I don't watch TV often, but there's a really cute show on Hulu and th- this Calm app ad came up where they're talking about green noise. Have you ever heard of green noise? I have not, but I'm jealous wow. that there's no blue noise. It had my nipples like tingling. It was beautiful. And the whole ad is just green noise. So now I'm going to get obsessed with that. Um, but what is it? Is it It's a blowers? little different pitch than white noise. It's like a bit more of mids. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So we can we can pretend like this is blue noise. Yes. And the blue oh. noise actually is making you a little bit uncomfortable. See? A little moist in the armpits. Oh, you know what it also sounds like? <laughs> huh? It sounds like bees. It's... It literally sounds my hive. See, I told you I would cry eventually. It's the bees. It literally sounds like bees. I read that recently too. If you're if you live near a beehive, it's like this vibration that heals oh, you. It changes Is that- everything, yeah. They're master, master healers. Did you say you have a beehive? No. Well, I had in one of the places I lived had like a bee infestation. Ah. Well, they call it that. Now I'm like, oh, it was a healing chamber. Yeah. Straight up. Was. The that's a whole podcast in itself. Bees. Yes, bees. Bees. They're so magical, <laughs> big booties with stripes. And I, so like that is really what we're working and with. And furry, here. yes. <laughs> Full circle. What does it mean to claim the queen frequency? <sighs> big booty, some nice stripes. And you're ready, you're wow. ready to go. Queen like, bee. I think of Beyonce too, who I will be going to her show in September. She's gonna, my favorite. Oh yeah. Wow. I mean, she claims, she claims it like you claim she, it. Maybe that's what I, uh, she's a big inspiration. Yeah, that's like Queen Bee energy. And yeah. I can totally see why she's an inspiration for you. So if you, if okay, so the majority of my audience, 73% are women, according to Instagram. Solid. Like, yeah, solid women. I think like, mine is pretty similar. We've got the, oh, uh, really? Yes. Uh, I'm not surprised, actually. It's, Lots it's of female empowerment. It is. So if you've got women listening at home that are going, you know what, I just want to step a little bit more into my queen essence. And you were to give them just like one piece of advice or mm. guidance or support. What would you share? Stepping more into your queen essence, um, literally become obsessed with discovering your dopeness. Mm-hmm. It might take you a lifetime to get to the depths of it. Mm-hmm. And that might just be the reason that we're here mm-hmm. to continually uncover that. And if you need some help with like courage and just a little bit of inspo and you want to see some cute butts with stripes and fur, Mm -hmm. furs, you can, you know, check out my music, (laughs) obviously. (laughs) Listen to to our collaboration, which is soon coming. Uh, That's actually going to happen. But there are queens everywhere here to support you too. We all want to see you thrive. Uh, Yes, exactly. Um, Speaking of courage, let me just put this down. <clears throat> I was wondering, <laughs> asking for a friend or two, okay. um, if you'd be down to give us a little rap. Oh yeah. What do we want to do? <gasps> I mean, what's I've, the song? Is everyone, it vitamins? Everyone's, huh? It's vitamins. That's the one. I think, I think so. This that's is the, the one jam? that's been collectively, we're all like really, really excited. This I don't know if you really needed a wild. beat or it's anything, but. Years old. It's been out for years and it's trending again on Instagram. I was like, <sighs> I guess it's summer. It's time. Well, you just reposted it, and I guess if we people just started following you, yeah, it's completely new in our world. True, yeah, that's what's cool about the internet too. Is yeah. you just keep repurposing content. Keep you, do, it. you know, once you find your purpose, which I won't until I'm older, you just <laughs> keep repeating yourself. Yeah, that's what I noticed too. Uh-huh. It does that patience is super. It's a cycle, but you're going upwards. Yes. So there's always you're always going up an octave. Yeah. Even though you are going in a cycle. <laughs> Precisely. Yeah. No, it's wild. Okay, so vitamins. I think the sound that's popular right now, you know it. Do you know it? Okay. Everyone knows it. So vitamin A, vitamin B, vitamin C, vitamin D, vitamin bitch, vitamin please. I went bullshit free for weeks. I snatched my physique and put the color back in my cheeks. I found peace. Now my influence is catastrophic. The beat break down soon as I get on it. Soon as Louis dropped the season, bitch, I copped it. Be like SOS, you can't stop it. <laughs> Okay. That's no, like my favorite part. It. Oh man, snatched my physique. It's that's it. Uh, all of it. There was also one where you were like, um, what did you say? Mouth is dirty, but pussy's pristine. Oh yes. I was like, oh, did she just go there? Oh. <laughs> I was like in the kitchen making a drink, and I heard it, and I was like, oh. 
Oh, that's what another, has she done to me? That's another word that like, I'm people. I'm moving my lower lama yeah. and it's got no control over it. My L5. Yeah, it's like uh, the the word pussy was also so taboo for so long. Uh-huh. And I was like, can we can we use it? Can we please? Oh my goodness. I, I'm so happy you happy did. With it. Thank you. All yeah. of us pussy havers out there, we're all like, yeah! There will be more. <laughs> there will be more pussy. <laughs> yeah, it's like, have you read the book Pussy by Regina? No. Oh. She was a guest on my podcast. Um, she's a friend of mine and she has a book called Pussy. And it is so powerful. It's all about reactivating the power of your pussy Amazing. and understanding as a pussy have it, like what that actually means. And she, it's like a really in-depth book and it completely changed my entire relationship with the word, my entire relationship with my own pussy, yes. my entire relationship with how I talk about it. And so when I witness another woman that's just laying it down in her lyrics like that, <laughs> oh, I'm like, let's go to Queens of Uniting, the wishes are being reborn oh, and uh, realizing, what was it? <sighs> There's a news to hear. I'll give you a preview of a new song. Yeah. It's not a rap, but the chorus is like, Stop and stare, we're so gorgeous. No one can afford us. Mm. We can let you finance that. <laughs> Pussy power enormous. It's not a performance. We just live our life like that. Let's go. So excited for that one. And that is what your music feels more like a prayer than it does a performance. That's so bizarre, right? We all of this like religious upbringing that mm. I denied, you know, pushed away. And now I'm like, it kind of feels like. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're back in that space, but it's an authentic space for me yeah. now. I mean, this is the kind of church I want to go to. See? <laughs> <laughs> Let's start a cult. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the link in the bio if you want to join our cult. <laughs> yeah. Sign up here. <laughs> Take your firstborn. So I have one final question for you as we roll this out. Even though I'm kind of sad that we're ending this podcast, but maybe I we can know. have you come back on again. We shall. I want to spend a lot of time here. It's so beautiful. Yeah. Really I okay. need to do like a whole nature day and I need to shoot TikToks in the hills. Yeah. I need to like come up here with a ball game. Yeah. Oh no, please. Like you've got the whole, th- you can use this entire Thanks. studio and we'll just hang out. Thank you. Um, if your microphone was connected mm. to all news media outlets and every radio station in the entire world and you had 30 seconds to deliver humanity a message. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> what would you say? <laughs> Just say the lyrics that I just said again. <laughs> um, you know what I would do? I would just be like, you're doing amazing, sweetie. Mm. Keep going. Mm. I know it feels crazy sometimes, but if you stop for a moment and you just breathe, I'd probably have forced them to take a breath with me too, <sighs> you know? And then I would say like, and now I'm just covering you in some golden light. I'm just covering you with protection and safety and... Even if you're going through something difficult, it's going to be okay. Mm. And uh, try to do something nice for a stranger and it will start that momentum for mm. you of going the other direction. That'd be cool if just like a small percentage of those people did, you know, a random act of kindness after hearing this across every news platform. Yeah, the human resonance would be off the charts. The, so the resonance cool. of the earth. So I would squeeze that in there too. But I need more time. This would, you know, I would need to like write this out. Yeah. But generally that. <laughs> What I love about that is that you've just allowed all of us to just give ourselves a bit more compassion towards our day and recognizing one of the greatest challenges is that we're judging the shit out of ourselves. Yeah. And therefore, we're you know pointing the finger outwards. But what would it look like if we actually just embedded a little bit more compassion, slowed down, took a breath, and told ourselves that we're actually doing all right? If that one piece just got rippled into 8 billion people's hearts, is minds and souls, how the energetically the whole planet would shift. And because it was so unusual that 30 seconds of every news station was me talking, yeah. it would probably go viral, right? So people would be re-listening to it. Yeah. So that'd be really interesting. We should figure this out. I mean, I'm down. Like, How do we, we hack the system? <laughs> I think really if our game plan is you and I make music, yeah. it's going to blow up. Then we're going to be able to get on the presidential election. And then we'll have a... Yes. Pre- <laughs> Blue for president. It's happening. Oh, man. That's the worst job, though, I heard. You don't want that job. Bulletproof fun. Yeah, bulletproof <laughs> I feel confident. All righty. Well, that's a good note to end on. Thank you so much for uh, allowing myself to put you in the hot seat and, and ask you not only to rap, but also um, it's my to, favorite. To, 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 to deliver a message to the entire planet. And um, also at the same time, like coming in with such an open heart. And uh, again, like I said at the beginning, like allowing your intuition to guide you here today for you to see that 
interview, to feel the resonance, to make the move, to to send a message on Instagram, to then to find a day to make it all the way from downtown into my garage and yes. to have this conversation with my sisters yes. that are backing me up and supporting this podcast to be a thing. Um, and Matrix, we've got Matrix in the house too. My bro. Yes, Matrix. Listen, yo. Like, <laughs> Matrix on we the ones love and twos. Matrix, okay? Yes. <laughs> it. Thank you all for being so welcoming to me mm-hmm. and for reminding me that I can work with groups and there are people out there that have good interest, you know, my best interests and mm-hmm. um, it's mm-hmm. possible to build this beautiful family. Mm. It's tight. Yeah. Ooh, so you planned it for a new friendship. I'm just going to water that. <laughs> Watch it grow. <laughs> You're playing guitar. We'll get Nick to bake a beat. Yes. Yeah. And then I don't know what I'm going to play. We'll find something. The triangle and a, and a, and a rap. Yes. <laughs> yes. Just rapping to a triangle. We could t- incorporate some really weird instruments too. There's some, you know, newer. Have you seen the one where you like push your hands toward it? That thing? And just woo. No, it's pretty cool. We're gonna Write make something. Down for later, go. Yeah, Ugh, on the blueprint. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, so much fun! I don't want it to end. I'm so sad. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of the Day Job Podcast. If you are not familiar with Queen Herbie's um, music platform videos, her her videos that are cleansing and removing any energies that are not serving you, even though they go out to millions of people, they also still feel so personal and so unique. Um, and then everything else in between that she, this incredible woman, is creating. Also, the House of Herbie Podcast with her partner and uh, Nick and herself, and just going into really unscripted, raw topics and just sharing their thoughts, their process, not from a place of having it all figured out, but more so just from a place of, I'm a human floating on a massive rock killing through space, (laughs) figuring it out as I go along. These are some of the tools that have helped me. I don't know the answers. This is the closest thing that I can to get to the truth. And so may this illuminate and bring a little bit more empowerment into your day and a little bit less self-judgment so that you can actually recognize that you're doing the best you can with the awareness that you have. This is what this woman is spreading. So if you resonate with today's episode and you would like more people to tune in to this Queen's medicine, whether it's media as medicine uh, or the music as medicine, then uh, please go ahead and share this episode on your stories. Tag myself, the Deja Blue podcast, and of course, Queen Herbie on Instagram so that we can get this message out to many more people than what our platform allows. And um, in the meantime... May this podcast empower you into a deeper level of your own unique expression. May this podcast illuminate something within you that makes you want to go, you know what, I'm going to put my phone down, I'm going to go create something. And that could be a painting, that could be a song, that could be a freestyle, that could be a beautiful artwork made through a dish of foods that you put together in a formation that looks super beautiful and nourishes you from the inside out. Mm -hmm. Recognizing that creativity has no limits and we are all artists and it's only on the other side of the story that you can't. And so why don't we start rewriting the story that you can utilize this conversation as an opportunity for a deeper level of permission for you to creatively express yourself in the world because that is what the world is needing more of your authenticity and your authenticity is your power. So here is your permission slip to tap deeper into your power. Until next week, thanks for tuning into the Deja Blue podcast. Sending you so much love.